Have you ever guys had cooling system problems on your 540, 335, 440, or etc.? Well, if you have a B58, then you probably have. Today, I'll be showing you guys how to replace the water pump in your B58 uh, motor. This is across all platforms. Uh, it's universal. So, I'm going to bring the part out for you guys and show you guys what we're going to be replacing and what you need to complete this job with. You're going to need a 1 inch extension. This, and in case you had a keen eye, you're going to need a 16 millimeter along with, I think this is a six inch extension. So six inch plus a uh, 16 millimeter for the tensioner, for the belt tensioner. Then you're going to need a uh, T30, I believe. Yep, T30 right here. Hopefully you guys can see that, but that's a T30 on it uh, as well as another whatever not another but uh just whatever extension you're using i have multiple of these so i keep them on multiple different tools then you're going to want to grab yourself a torque wrench uh, i got this one off of amazon but you can use whatever one you want if you want to use a mechanical one or electronic one like this one i just like it because it beeps um and i'll go over the torque spec of the bolts and which order you want to uh put the bolts back in and tighten them up at. And that's pretty much all you'll need to replace the water pump. Now, moving on to the accessories. Um, there's a fan shroud that sits somewhere right about here. Um, you're gonna need a, I believe T13. Don't quote me on that because I had a metal radiator on mine, so I had to replace uh, my bolts that went on there, so I can't really remember what was on the top of them. But um, this whole piping right here is going to be uh, running all along the top of the fan shroud and to remove this piping off of the fan shroud there's a couple of different ways that you can do it um, you're gonna lose coolant anyway so I recommend just taking off the whole pipe off of the heat exchanger um, you're not gonna lose that much coolant trust me uh, since especially this is high up on the system and to remove these the best way that I found uh, is to let me zoom in here. Is to take one of these uh, nice long uh, <laughs> pry bar, not pry bar, but pick tools, and just really you just want to uh, stick it in here on the top on the center of this and push all the way down through. And once you push all the way down through, uh, just kind of like a screwdriver pry up, and these metal teeth inside of here. Uh, will release um, off of the plastic and you can do that with uh, every single one of these there's one all the way if I can zoom out there's one right here as well as you can see pointing right here and that's what you're gonna need to um, uh, undo in my case there was three on my 540i um, but Yours could have four, yours could have two. It just depends on what you're working on. Now, if you're anything like me, you're gonna to wanna to take lots and lots of pictures of the belt routing. In this case, it's not that difficult because uh, we, all we have is the alternator, your AC compressor, harmonic balancer, and water pump, as well as the tensioner pulley. Um, so that's not very hard to remember, but still nice to get in there and take a good couple pictures that way you're able to remember where everything goes. And the next step you're going to want to do is take yourself uh, the 16 millimeter and attach it to the actual uh, tensioner right here. It's going to be, shine some light on there. It's going to be this piece right here. It's going to be this piece right here, right where you see my finger at. That's going to be where you're going to uh, put your 16 millimeter on. Just like this. Keep some force on it. Push it all the way down. And should be able to take the belt off. Should, keyword should. All right. And the belt is off. And now that the belt is off, we can just, sake of memory, go ahead and 
take some more pictures. That we've taken some pictures and gotten the belt off. That was just very simple to get it off. It was not um, caught up on anything. We're just gonna take a quick inspection of the belt all the way around. And we're just gonna make sure there's no cracking or we're not able to see any of the metal wires that go through uh, this belt. In this case, my belt seems to be pretty good. And I'm not going to replace this. Even though it does have 100,000 miles on it, and now would be the time to replace it, I'm not going to because I don't see anything wrong with this belt. Now here's where our one inch and six inch plus our T30 comes into play. Uh, T30 is for loosening up all of the bolts around the water pump and the one inch extension is gonna just help us save our back uh, from bending over a lot more uh, while we're in here as you can see sticks out just a little bit farther um, and allows us to use our ratchet to then you know loosen the bolts up if you don't have a one inch you don't need it it's not necessary it's just a nice little back saver say thank you to, for, to your back <laughs> Now, for better visualization purposes, I will be showing you what work I'm doing in there, but it's going to be very hard for me to get a camera shot uh, in that tight space. So, here's the new water pump that I will be replacing the old one with. Here you can see the bolt locations. There's going to be uh, one right here, here on two on the top, one uh, and two on the bottom portion where you're not able to easily see it. And then that's pretty much it. So there's five locations, one, two, three, right here. Let me turn around so that way you guys can get a better view of the uh, positioning. And this is how it would sit in the car. So facing you right now, uh, this is how it would be on the car. So let's just go over it again. One, two, three, four, five. There's five T30s on the water pump. Uh, you will not need to have to make your own gasket. I know some older ones, uh, they do make your, they make you make your own gasket, but that's not necessary for this case. And we're just gonna do a quick functions test. You should hear basically nothing um, whenever you are spinning the water pump. So let's take a listen. And that's the sign of a good bearing. Now, um, I know my bearing did not go out. What actually happened was um, in here, as it sits in here, the weep hole is right here. And I believe the weep hole is also right here. If not, I uh, will see that the coolant is coming out right here and probably overflowing and dripping down onto the engine block. And I can give you guys a better view of that um, before I take everything apart. And as one of the most famous people in the world has uh, said, uh, you know, let there be light and there shall be light. Now, uh, here we go right here. We zoomed in on it and you're able to see the where uh, the water pump is leaking. Now, uh, taking a visual look, um, from the weep hole on top, I don't see much uh, coolant at all, if any, on the top of the water pump. Now, I do know that this is dripping down and you might be saying, well, you have the whole intake off. How do you know that it's not coming from anywhere up top or anything like that? And to those people, I will say, I cleaned it off. <laughs> I have cleaned this area off multiple times while the vehicle is running um, to uh, you know, further diagnose and confirm my suspicions that it is the water pump. Um, so I'd clean this off before even showing you guys. And I left this overnight and it was leaking uh, right there in that area. So in case you guys are also wondering how to diagnose if it is your water pump and why you're losing coolant, uh, that's one way that you're able to diagnose that. And now we're going to crack open all of the bolts. If you have an electric ratchet, that would even you know save you a lot more time. I do have an electric ratchet, um, but in my case, you know, Snap-on doesn't like you leaving batteries in tools. So all of my Snap-on batteries are completely dead. Uh, and I'm not buying any uh, new batteries. So I'll be going over to Milwaukee <laughs> and buying me a, another electric ratchet. Because absolutely not. <laughs> so the first one that we're going to loosen is the one on top. And we're going to go top to bottom. So here we go. All right, now that all of the bolts are off um, and we've examined them, uh, these are just two of them. Matter of fact, let me grab all five of them for you. That way you guys can see. None of these are the are different heights, so uh, you don't have to worry about any order of these going back in. Uh, these are not um, torqued to yield bolts, so you won't have to replace them either. Uh, you'll just have to make sure that you torque these down uh, when the time comes to put on the uh, new water pump. All right, so. 
to take it off, it's very simple. All you have to do is pull on the pulley and the water pump will come out. Now, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a bucket or at least some dry sweep underneath. In my case, I have some dry sweep underneath because I, I, I didn't take off the under tray um, in preparation for this. So a lot of uh, coolant is just gonna drip down. Uh, since this is the lowest part of the engine, a lot of coolant is gonna come out of the engine. So um, make sure you have some coolant. Okay, I'm not gonna YouTube magic this. This is not at all um, easy to come off. It should have just come off, but uh, I guess the sealant that they used, um, plus all the heat cycles, it's very stuck on there. So there are some uh, divots in the water pump, uh, in the water pump itself that are holding it in, uh, such as this set screw, not set screw, but uh, dowel pin location as well as um, this right here, this point right here, um, and right here in this big uh, dowel location right here. So, I will get back to you guys uh, after I try and get this off. Got to press record while I was doing it, um, but here's the water pump in case you're wondering how I got it out. I started banging it with a mallet that wasn't working. So, the water pump is facing like this in here, um, so I took one of these uh, adjustable crowbars that I had, and I just stuck it under, ooh, sorry. I just stuck it underneath this right-hand corner. There's nothing around here that you will damage, so feel free to um, take your pry bar. Do not take a screwdriver, please do not. You're going to hit one of these plastic lines and cost yourself probably an another $200. Just be careful, pull up on this, like this, with this motion pushing against the engine and it will release it. I didn't have to pry anywhere else on any, uh, on the water pump to get this out. Now, I'm actually very grateful that, um, that I did replace this uh, water pump because take a listen to this. There's some play in the shaft. Um, as well as, yeah, there's some play in the shaft as well as um, some bearing noise. Um, also, uh, any key, uh, keen eyes would have noticed that the dowel pin actually came out the engine. That's perfectly fine. Uh, all you have to do is take some uh, pliers. I grab this and put it in the other water pump and it'll be perfectly fine. It's not gonna affect any ceiling or anything like that. It's just to get the um, water pump perfectly aligned. Now, um, as we can see, we have actually two weep holes um, from my understanding or you know how water pumps work in my experience. Uh, this is weep hole number one. And obviously we have the uh, biggest one right here, which uh, gives us a nice clear indicator that our water pump has indeed failed. My mileage is 117,000, round it down. 100,000 miles you'll get out of these. And just to show you guys how easy it is to take out these dowel pins, please don't do this over an open engine bay uh, and drop this as you will probably lose it. But just take some pliers, take the dowel pin off, throw the water pump away, and um, put this dowel pin in the new water pump. Just so that way you see what it looks like, so you can identify it. The camera's not... There we go. That way you can identify it. There is no uh, right and wrong way. Um, both sides look identical to me. So, but just for safety, I'm going to put this in the way it was in on the uh, on the water pump. And just like that, we now have the dowel pin in the um, water pump location, or yeah, in the, in the water pump. Uh, and for anybody who's wondering what the new versus old looks like, new old uh, seal on this is very much um, probably about two to three millimeters uh, raised um, and there's also a lot more room I'm assuming obviously when I tighten this up it's going to smush the seal but this should work um, for the time being you know all right so now that we have everything uh, installed uh, I do I'm going to actually zoom in on the dowel pin on the engine that way you guys are able to see uh, exactly what this opening looks like uh, that way there's no confusion uh, in the comment section Let's see here right there that is the that's the opening 
right here, the tip of my finger, um, and it goes. You're really just gonna wanna make sure these dowel pins um, either stay on the engine or when they come off, inspect your old uh, water pump to make sure that it's not um, going to be misaligned. Now, before I put the water pump back on, uh, there's a couple things, or one thing that I always like to do is put some silicone grease on the O-rings. Uh, it's not gonna hurt it, it's not gonna make it degrading fast or anything like that. Uh, in fact, that this will, um, putting silicone grease on all of your O-rings will actually make your O-rings last a lot longer, um, as well as uh, seal up any imperfections in the uh, gasket if it were to develop any. Uh, it's kind of just like putting a nice thin layer of oil on your uh, seal um, when you're changing your oil filter out. So after that, you'll be able to um, just put the new water pump in. Uh, it's not going to sit all the way flush um, or flat with it. Um, you're gonna have to use the bolts to further tighten it down and then that will uh, be able to uh, smush the seal down evenly. And I'll go over the uh, tightening torques once I uh, put all of these in by hand. Only put these in by hand, uh, that way you don't strip out the block. Or sorry, this is actually a separate bracket. So even if you do strip it out, uh, you'll be able to replace it, but still. Good practice, always put these in by hand. That way you're not uh, redoing a job or getting yourself and costing yourself uh, a lot more money than you really have to. And so just like uh, any wheel that you would be tightening down to make sure it is uh, you know, fully seated first, you're gonna do the same thing with this. You're gonna start from the bottom. Uh, this one right here is the hardest one to get to. You might almost feel like you're even cross-threading it, but trust me, as long as you're doing it by hand, uh, with the, uh, once you get the first couple threads in and then you uh, take an extension and twist it down as much as you can uh, with your hand, um, then you should be good to tighten it up with the um, ratchet. Uh, so the order that I tighten it up is just gonna be uh, one, two, three, four, and five up here. And then I just went around in a whole circle uh, until it was fully tightened, uh, similar to how you would do the, uh, uh, the fuel pump, the fuel pump on the uh, engine. Similar to that, you just twist it on one side, one side, but in this case, all around, all around, all around, until you feel it tightening down. And once you feel it tightening down, then you'll be able to um, uh, torque it down. Now the torque spec on this is 10 Newton meters, so each one of these is 10 Newton meters, and you're just gonna wanna make sure you tighten it down uh, real nice and good. And that's pretty much it. Uh, once you're done torquing it up, you can attach everything uh, back together in the reverse order and you're pretty much done with the water pump. All that's left to do is to start it up, uh, commence the bleed procedure. There's a lot of videos online on how to do that, as well as forum posts. Um, so I don't, I'm not, I don't think I'm gonna go over that in this video, um, but that's pretty much how you would do that. If you guys liked the video, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I really do appreciate your time, taking the time out of your day to just watch me and, um, you know, learn something I guess <laughs> um, so I do appreciate it um, hope you guys have a good day peace out